So welcome everyone uh, to the next edition of CFO Inside TV. I'm very happy to have you here as our viewers again. And I'm also very happy to welcome Josh Rosner, Managing Director of the independent research firm Graham Fisher & Company, based in the US, in New York to be precise, and also co-author of several New York Times best-selling books, including um, books on CDO failures and uh, financial markets. Welcome, Josh. Thank you for having me. Um, in your latest analysis, you basically make one bold statement, which is uh, German, US, German government bonds will not be safe havens um, for the near future. Could you elaborate on that? Sure. Claim? Sure. No matter what the outcome of the current euro crisis is, the German government, German taxpayers, are going to have to absorb increased costs above the levels that have already been committed. Um, if we have an orderly breakup of the Eurozone, if we have a disorderly breakup, or even if we move to the less costly fiscal integration, uh, banking union, and deposit insurance regime, the costs are going to rise materially from here, which don't support the fundamentals where they currently stand on so you, bonds. So you consider... Um a fiscal union, the least costly option? The least option. costly option. So why do you think people do not follow down that path? Well, I think at this point we're in a bit of gamesmanship where the body politics, politicians, technocrats, are unwilling to fully assess um, or apprise, I should say, the public of the fact that the costs are going to rise from here. Honestly. But that's two different kinds of things uh, in, my, in my perspective. The ultimate costs and the concept of a safe haven. Germany was a safe haven within the context of a, of a vacuum of the Eurozone. Mm -hmm. But if there are more countries than just and more economies than just the Eurozone, then at some point there's an increased realization that the costs of solving the crisis, whether through a union or through the breakup of the current union, will ultimately cost Germany and therefore that needs to be reflected in the German bond yields, especially since Germany has been driven by export markets for the past decade. Mm -hmm. Those export markets are seeing weakened economies, which will definitionally affect the German economy. Germany's debt to GDP is not particularly healthy at 80%. And, uh, and that's with only a half a trillion dollars already committed to solving this crisis. Only. only <laughs> before we consider what the future costs would be of any of the outcomes. So what would you say um, are likely yields to come? It depends on how it's dealt with from here. Uh, markets tend to reprice abruptly, markets uh, as we saw in the periphery. Mm -hmm. um, and so if we see the, uh, the politicians come out and say, look, here's the reality of the costs of moving towards a full fiscal union, but we're committed to it and we're moving towards it, I expect that we'll see a slower transition. We'll see an initial move up, mm -hmm. but we'll see a slower transition than if it looks like we're heading towards a full breakup of the EMU, in which case I expect it to be very abrupt, overshooting even the fundamentals, which I think should be probably closer to 2.5% here, from here on the 10-year. Would you say, oh, let's put it the other way, in, in your um, recent analysis, you mentioned a lot about the, um, um, the pain that the German economy went through in the last decade to gain its um, competitiveness. Right. Would you say overall Germany has benefited from the Eurozone or well, so that's, are the costs too high? I, I would say that's the unfortunate reality of what's gone on. So if you think about contextually, um, the EMU began on the heels of German reunification. Germany's debt was high, unemployment rates were high, um, and Germany entered into the EMU with an overvalued currency. The way that Germany ended up dealing with the structural problems domestically was forcing wage cuts on the German population. Mm -hmm. So most of the benefit that, that Germany has had over the past decade almost have not come to the consumer. German labor has really been largely robbed of their ability to consume. The benefits have been to German exporters and German banks who've been able to arbitrage the yield difference between the, the various sovereigns and German rate. The export sector is a big employer in Germany. So if the That's export right. sector benefits, well, it's not to the detriment of the It's population. not to the detriment, but the wages were the basis yes. of the exports rather than real fundamental core productivity gains. Would you see um, some of the core countries of the Eurozone as real winners, or is that 
Mm, Look, if reasons. you're going to move towards the least costly solution, which is a, a fiscal integration, a banking union, a deposit insurance scheme throughout Europe, and an ECB with the ability to recapitalize banks and also print to support growth, um, then ultimately you end up with a harmonization from the low to the high. And that's mm-hmm. a slow process, but mm-hmm. that's ultimately what we're committing to in that case. If we were to see a disorderly collapse, everyone loses and the losses are massive. Would, would that integration include countries like Greece? Or would you say it has to be without the weakest peripheral I don't countries? think at this point we can have it without the weakest peripheral, without risking a full collapse. Because okay. you have to consider not just the economic costs of a failure or a withdrawal of Greece. But you have to remember that other peripheral economies have exposures to Greece, that if Greece leaves and they take those losses, might require the core to support those peripheral economies in their exit or their integration. So I think we're at a point where it's either a slow move towards chaos and the failure of the EMU, or a decisive decision to choose the least costly option rather than the kick the can approach, which still leads to that disorderly disintegration of the monetary union. All right. Thank you very much. Very concise analysis. Um, Let me finish, as always, with our uh, three quick questions with very short answers. Um, Question number one would be, will Greece still be in the Eurozone by the end of this year? Well, we're playing a game of brinksmanship. It's hard to say. Uh, I would hope the answer is yes, because if the answer is no, chaos will ensue. And will we still have the Eurozone in five years from now? I would hope so. It'll be, uh, it'll be a difficult process. But, uh, and in any case, uh, German yields will have to rise. But I would hope so because I think that's a path towards stability and further global integration. Okay. And the final question, will the U.S. dollar still be considered the world's leading currency in 10 years from now? Ten years from now, I think the U.S. will still be the world's leading currency. I think that the, the underlying question is, are there any safe havens? And I think the real answer to that is most of the advanced industrial economies are over leveraged, and everyone's going to end up having to get their house in order, but that's a long-term process. Okay. Thank you, Josh. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Um, clearly an American analy- um, analyst with a um, dedication to bringing Europe more to the United States of Europe. Um, and um, a stronger fiscal integration um, for the avoidance of chaos and collapse. Thank you very much, Josh, and join us again at the next um, edition of CFO Inside TV. Thank you.